Hello, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about the phases of respiration. Now, here you see a uh, diagram, and this is not anatomically correct, because as you know, the air uh, does not go in through the apex of the lung. But this is just a diagram that I want to use to show how uh, the oxygen moves in from the atmosphere um, into the lungs, um, crosses the alveolar capillary membrane into the bloodstream and then uh, travels through the bloodstream down to cells um, and feeds the cells with oxygen and then uh, blood deoxygenated blood comes back to the heart and moves back to the lungs and I'm going to talk about each each phase here um, these are what I just talked about very quickly are the phases of respiration um, so I want to start by defining the term respiration and there are actually two definitions for the term respiration. The way we are using respiration here is um, by what I would call systemic respiration. And by systemic respiration I mean that it is the process of transporting oxygen from the external atmosphere down to the cellular level. So is the process of transport from basically the air to the cells. Okay, now I'm not going to get into a lot of details here, but there is also a term that you will hear in those of you who have taken um, you know, biochemistry and other biology courses may have heard the term cellular respiration. Now cellular respiration is actually the a term that talks about the use of oxygen to generate energy that's used by the cells, particularly in the form of the energy currency used by the cells called ATP. So this is a term that you will hear in some science courses called cellular respiration. But this is not what we are focusing on here. We are really talking about systemic respiration, which, it, which we are referring to the transport of oxygen from the air to the cells. Okay, But let's focus on these cells for a second, because this is really why the entire system exists. Down in the cells, the cells um, need energy to do the work that they do. And what kind of work do cells do? Well, some cells, like muscle cells, need to contract and move, right? And, um, you know, some cells need to, other cells need to move too, not just muscle cells, like white, white blood cells uh, move around the bloodstream through the process of diapedesis. That requires energy as well. Um, cells need energy to synthesize molecules and, um, and to secrete molecules. And even passive cells that don't seem to be doing a whole lot are using an amazing amount of energy to pump ions in and out of the cells. So remember we've talked about this in other units. All of our cells have sodium potassium pumps that are constantly pumping sodium out of cells and potassium into cells to maintain the exact balance of electrolytes that they need in, inside and outside of their membranes. And this requires actually 70% of our body's resting metabolism just spent on these ion pumps. So if our cells don't have access to energy, even our you know cells that don't move and don't synthesize a whole lot and don't secrete a whole lot, if our cells don't have energy even for a few moments then they will lose the ability to pump ions and they will quickly die so they need a constant supply of energy now how do they get that energy well most of the cells in the body have inside them mitochondria and mitochondria are these specialized little energy factory and factories inside the body we're going to talk about them more when we get into our chapter our module 
in a couple of weeks about metabolism, but let me just introduce the concept to you here. Mitochondria are basically um, made up of these um, huge uh, networks inside that are of sort of folded in pouchings of membranes. And these membranes are dotted with millions and millions of enzymes. And these enzymes enable lots and lots of chemical reactions to occur. And particularly, the chemical reactions that occur are chemical reactions that release large amounts of energy. And they are chemical reactions that use oxygen. oxygen. So they use oxygen from the environment, and then they use oftentimes glucose, but they may use other substrates as well, proteins, uh, amino acids, and fatty acids to, and this is just a, a glucose molecule here, it just as an example, and uh, what this requires oxygen, and it has an enzyme that enables the reaction to occur, and this releases lots and lots of energy. So lots of energy, and the energy is used to create an ATP molecule, which is a high energy molecule, plus some carbon dioxide, and some water. And we're not going to get into the whole chemical here, but the, the important thing is to know that energy is being used to create ATP, which is the energy currency that the body uses to do the work of the body. So the actually the sodium potassium pump is otherwise known as the sodium potassium ATPase pump because it uses ATP to run the pump. ATP is the form of energy that the cell uses to create work. But it's important to note here that in order for this these types of reactions to occur, the body requires lots and lots of oxygen and it produces lots and lots of carbon dioxide. So the cell needs a large and continuous supply of oxygen and it needs to get rid of its continuous waste that is creating of carbon dioxide. So the entire respiratory system exists to bring oxygen to the cells and carbon dioxide away from the cells. So how does that happen? Well, the first step is we need to bring oxygen from the environment down into the lungs. So this would be the first phase and it's called pulmonary ventilation, known in lay terms as breathing. Right, so this is what we do day in and day out, breathing in and out. Now, the second phase occurs here in, this is a very large alveoli that I drew here. They're obviously microscopic. The alveoli is the air sacs within the lung. We're going to talk about the anatomy of the lung a little bit more, but they are microscopic and they are very, very thin membranes just made up of a single cell layer with a single layer of basement membrane and then a single endothelial cell layer of a capillary. It's a very thin layer and then we have a capillary here and because it's so thin it allows oxygen to easily get transported across. So crossing this membrane is the second phase and it's called external gas exchange. Why is it called external gas exchange? Well, because it's coming from the external environment into the internal environment or the bloodstream. So external gas exchange involves crossing the alveolar capillary membrane. Okay, 
Now the third phase is actually the transportation of oxygen in the bloodstream. So we have now crossed through this alveoli into the capillaries and we're now in the bloodstream. And now it's the oxygen is going to get carried in the bloodstream. Now most of the oxygen, and we'll talk about this a little more, actually 99.5% of the oxygen is going to be carried by hemoglobin inside the red blood cells. And it's going to get carried back to the heart via the pulmonary vein and then it's going to get, to get pumped through the left ventr from the left atrium through the left ventricle into the aorta where it's going to go through the systemic circulation and work its way down to the body cells and then it's going to transition across the capillary membrane into the cells now this is called all right so that the third phase there is what we just talked about and this is gas transport in the blood and then the final phase is this phase right here and use a different color here oops number 4 phase number four and that is internal gas exchange and that is when the oxygen goes from the bloodstream to the cells okay so these are the four different phases of systemic respiration supplying the cells with the oxygen that they need Okay, so that's um, really the the gist of it. That is what's going to happen, and I'm going to um, we're going to be talking about different aspects of this as we get more into the inform um, in, into the depth of this section. In the next video, I'm going to talk specifically about the airways of the lungs and how the air moves in through our nose and our mouth and work their way down into lower. Uh, airways specifically into the alveoli which is the functional unit of the lung that allows the gas ex the external gas exchange to occur so I look forward to seeing you in that video thank you very much